G'day lads and ladders. Uh, this is gonna be a comprehensive guide on how to assemble uh, the new Jet Tech fish boxes and also storage boxes. So when you first get your kit, lay out all the plates. So make sure you got every piece. You get three bags of hardware. So one has got 24 bolts, nuts and washers of M4s that are gonna be used to assemble the base of the crate that holds it all together. You got one bag for your fishing rod holders. And then you've also got a bag uh, for your feet as well, your legs. The tools that you're gonna need is a three mil Allen key, an eight mil spanner, a two and a half mil Allen key, and because they're six mil nuts or six or seven, one of the two, anyway, I use a shifter. Uh, and that's all you're gonna need to assemble this whole setup. Now with the JetTech fish boxes, these are a fully modular system. So you can customize and set this up to how you'd like, being different types of fishing you're doing, either going out wide or up the estuaries. You can place all your rod holders and fuel containers exactly where you want. You can adjust the box as well. Uh, it's gonna take you about maybe 45 minutes to set it up. So it's a one-time setup. Once you've done that, it's 30 seconds to strap the bad boy on the ski. Let's dive into it. All right, so the best way to start is using, start with the base plate. So this has got an arrow cut out, which is actually facing towards the back of the ski. I'm gonna get the side panel. Now one panel, the two side panels are different. One's got a hole and that's for the bung in the S ski and one doesn't. So I'll start with the one with the hole. So right now with the arrow facing me, this goes on the left hand side. Get your M4 by 12 mil nuts here. Now you use the nut, the button head on the outside going in and all the nuts and washers are on the inside of the crate. Get a washer and then hand do your nut on. Repeat that for the three bolts on the bottom. If you have any bolts that are a little bit sticky to get in, because uh, it's pretty tight clearances, just grab your Allen key and screw her on in. Boom, quick note. Do everything hand tight to start with. Every single nut and bolt that consists of holding the crate together, all hand tight, then at the end, we'll go through with our tools and tighten it all up. Next piece, this bad boy with the Jet Tech logo. So this here is the back part of the crate. And you can notice, see the lip here on the top? This lip is also to help secure cargo, or whatever you may have in there. That's gonna be facing out. So don't have it facing inwards, because if it was inwards, you're not gonna get your cooler in, and your Jet Tech logo will be facing the wrong way, and we can't have that. I've just chucked one bolt in the middle here, uh, and nut just to hold it in place, then I'll go to this side piece, and I'll chuck one there as well and that way it's gonna hold itself up while you get the rest in. There is 24 to be exact. Sweet, so I got the back piece on. I'm gonna go to the other side piece now as well. Um, take note also, these sit on the outside of the plate, not the inside. All these, we've specifically engineered and designed this for all the clearances to be perfect, so on the outside of this piece, but it's also on the inside of this back piece. And that way it looks nice and tidy. So I just put one in the center again. I've just gone up to the top, get one here. These are also Nylox nuts. So uh, most people will know what that is. It's got the little rubber seal on the end so they don't come loose. Now on to your last piece, uh, which is your front part. You'll see there's a couple little tabs on the bottom. This is actually for connecting sleds. JetTech fish boxes are actually compatible with our sleds. Bit of a world first, that one. So I'll chuck one bolt up there. Okay, and get one on the side and then one on the base of it on the bottom. I should have just been going with the middle one. And that way it's gonna hold itself there. Right now, so now we've got the actual box together. We've still got to do the feet. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab my eight mil and my three mil Allen key. I'm using it on a ratchet uh, just because it's quicker, but and I go around and I start tightening every single bolt. Your kit also comes with four foam pads. Now two are for the feet and two are for inside the crate for your cooler if you've got the fish box option. So for your feet, there, there is kind of lefty-righties going on here. 
we need, so, two there, two there. What you're gonna do, where the single holes are, and then there's double holes. And then you've got two of your plates will have three holes on the top. That's what's gonna secure it to the box itself. So, and you've got two levels of adjustment here. So you can be completely flat. So this is good for like late model Cedars and also Kawasaki's, but Yammies um, and older Cedars, you wanna go to the next setting. So it's sitting up on, on a slight angle and compensating for the skis to create some angle. All right, so you get your next bag of washers. Now in here, you're gonna have six M5s and six M4s. Your M5s, the slightly larger ones, are gonna be for your feet. So you're gonna chuck one of the hoo-hahs through there. You got two different size washers. You're gonna tell the difference because one's got bigger holes on the inside. And nuts. Get that in. Two more. Now all the washers are for the, the nut side of things. On the nut end until we get to the box. I'm gonna show you what we do there just to hold a little bit more strength. So, I've got my feet facing in. If you wanted to, you could flip these the other way around and you could have one, like your base facing in on here on the crap box and one foot facing out. It doesn't really change anything, but if you wanted to. This one, again, see the single hole, get that one lined up, get your bolt, go through. I like to have the nut on the outside, reason being with the sled, if you are kitting it up with our, the Jet Tech sleds when they face in, they're just not kind of rubbing, even though they've got nose guards on, but it's just nicer and more clearance with the nuts facing outwards. Just minor details, really. So I'm building this for our Yammy outside. Guys, it is important to make sure you get the larger bolts, oh, larger bolts in the sled. Up, oh, feet. There you go, that's all done. Just grabbing my shifter here. You know what? I fibbed at the start. You actually could do it with a 10 mil and a four mil Allen key, not a three. Oopsie. Make sure these are nice and tight. Once you got these all loose, be in. Um, Grab them and see how you got the three holes here. Now, with the Jetac boxes, because we've designed these to be able to accommodate with our sleds, we precisely kind of measured it, all popular model skis, that they can sit out on a 45 or on a straight angle. You can choose which option. Obviously, if you're running a sled behind it, you're gonna be 45 out. If you're not, you may as well just leave them straight. So I've actually got one set up out there for a sled. So right now I'm gonna put this one just straight. When attaching the feet to the box, you got your three holes here. Um, make sure you use, the, there's M4 bolts in here that are M4 by 16. Grab one of the washers, put it on the inside, go through the inside of the box like that. Slide it up. I've actually got a bung shoulder at the moment, um, so I might have a might, might make this look a bit more difficult than it is. So washer on the inside, washer on the outside. So like that. There's three per foot, and button head of the bolt on the inside. That's that one. Now I can go and do it up with my three mil spanner and eight mil ratchet. Just continue the same process for the other foot as well. Quick note, if you're doing an angled foot like this, um, for a model such as a Yamaha, just make sure you don't put it on the other way around. And the angled part, so the part with the most distance, is towards the Jet Tech logo, which is the back of the ski. All right, once you got it all together, um, you wanna put on your foam pads on the feet. I'll just give it a little bit of a wipe down there. Just grab two of your pads. Take off, these are self-adhesive. 
try center them up. Boom. Just like that. All right, she's all done and assembled. If you order the option of just a storage box, uh, so you're not using it exactly for fishing, etc., you'll get it like this, and you'll also have your two straps. So you can pretty much skip to the, the next part from here. I'm just gonna then go assemble the rod holders and stuff for the fish box options, and then we'll dive into how to attach it to your ski. All right, moving on to the fish box setup. So what you're gonna get is your four rod holders, your tackle box, cargo net, four rod holder leashes, two more foam pads for the inside to protect the esky, and your ratchet tie down straps as well. So let's dive into it. You've got four foam self adhesive buffer pads on the inside. You're just gonna chuck two right here, and then two on the front as well. You can kind of see the locations that we got them, and that just gives you a bit of space in between nuts and bolts and your esky. Your cargo net for your tackle box, pretty straightforward. Seven bolts on the back of the crate right there. So the side without the Jetec logo. Grab your little baggie. So there'll be seven bolts in this baggie, straight on through. Washer on the inside. Guys, again, I can't stress enough, use washers on all your nuts here. Net's on, tackle box, and she goes, happy as Larry. Let's go catch a fish. Oh, we need rod holders and fishing rods. <laughs> all right, moving on to your rod holders. Your kit comes with four rod holders. Great rod holders they are too, from our friends at Railblazer. With these, um, this is where you can be customizable and choose where you would like to fit your rod holders. Take into consideration if you've also optioned up your fish box um, or storage box with uh, fuel containers, they all kind of align with each other. So sometimes if you put a fuel container in one spot, it means a rod holder can't go there, but it's all compatible. So I personally, what I like to do is chuck two trawling rod holders up the front here. There's two slots that you can put them in. So you can go the lower holes right here. Now if I go here, we can have two fuel containers on the sides here. You'll see there's three lots of four holes. So the two outer ones, you can actually have two fuel containers there, but the container is going to stick out through here. So you could have this rod holder in the lower position and it's going to have clearance. Obviously you're not going to be able to use it for trawling at the time, but it all comes down to what exactly you're doing. You might be going to a destination and unloading all the fuel and then heading back out. Um, or I personally just like to do the further, uh, the next slot up, and that way I get a little bit more span between my two trawling rod holders. Um, and I just have one fuel container on the side, one on the back on the other side, and I can also still put two on the back as well. All right, no, I can put three on the back, I'm wrong, because we can carry five of this setup. That's right, I forget what I designed sometimes. Eight bolts here. Now, this little packet, you got some spring washers, put them on first. Then go, you've got a small flat washer, just a little tiny bugger. Um, that's small. Spring washer. Small flat washer, done. With the bolts of your rod holders, you're gonna come through the inside here so you can see there's holes. Go through, then it'll poke out. Grab your washer, just one flat washer, the larger ones, one nut. I find it easy to hold the Allen key there so it doesn't fall back out. Boom, she's on, just like that. Repeat the process for four, all four of your rod holders. Alrighty, so I got my two trolling rod holders on. Now the kit does come with two more. These ones you wanna use as your upright rod holders for when you're traveling with your rods and then you chuck them in when you're trolling. Um, you can option up the Jetec fish boxes. You can add more rod holders. You can actually take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 if you wanted to. Don't really see a reason to take 10, but you can. 
Now, where do I like to put my other two? Either right there next to the trolling ones or I personally like to go right here. You can put them on the back if you're wanting to do your fuel containers here. If I take 10 litres of fuel, so five litres each side, I can still have one and two rod holders with the fuel container in the middle. All right, then grab your rod leashes. There's holes all throughout the box that you can just loop it through itself as such. No rocket science there. I like to go through the rod, clip it like that. Happy days. Rightio, all done. So it is a bit of time to set it up. Takes me maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, saying. Once it's done, you don't have to do it again. Um, these are universal for every make and model ski. So just strap her on and off you go. Catch some fish. Actually, before we do that, I'll better show you how to strap it on. All right, for your storage box and fish boxes, um, we've got a 22 Yamaha FX right here, which is gonna be the same for your VXs. Uh, very similar to attach it to Sea-Doo's and late model Sea-Doo's. I've got a video for late model Sea-Doo's that will roll in just a second. So with this, make sure it's nice and central to your transom. It's not bloody like that or, you know, half tipping off. So what you want to do first, so with your yammies, you've got two different straps here. You've got one kit that's got no hooks, just a ratchet, no hooks. For all Yamahas and Sea-Doo's Pride 18 and older and Kawasaki's, this one here is used for the front, looping through your rear eyelet. And for the late model Sea-Doo's with link systems, obviously they've got a different transom configuration. I'll, we'll get into that in a second, but yeah, use this one actually for the rear. With the Yami, under your one with the two hooks. It's all stainless as well. Good quality ratchets and straps these are actually. So you've got a slot, a horizontal slot just underneath this rod holder here. Go across, make sure it's nice and straight in the inside of the box. Hook it on there, grab your other side. Now don't do this all up really tight, just so it's on there. Grab your second strap. Now, we've got two slots here. One for the Sea-Doo's with link system, so late model stuff. And then one up the top for everything else. So, go through. Go through. Back around. Through the eyelet. So for your late model Cedars, uh, you can see the position that we've got the fish box of the transom here. And for the rear strap, so what you're going to do is use the one strap that's got no hooks and just the ratchet on. You're going to do a continuous loop right through. And then you're going to use the strap on the front that's got the two stainless hooks that are going to hook straight into where your ski pylon poles uh, clip right into. Now if you just got the storage box option, um, continue to do it up completely tight, start on one side, move to the other side, go back to this side, then back to that side. Don't just wrench one side and then do the other, it's just not balanced out. Now, if you've got one of our Eskies with the fish box option, these crates are purposely built for our Eskies. It's a nice snug fit. The straps, we actually run them on the inside because what they do when they tighten up, they actually compress the, against the Esky and actually hold the Esky nice and tight. So, I'll show you what I mean. So got the Jet Tech Esky here. <laughs> so got the Jet Tech Esky here. These are a great quality, fantastic Esky, 55 liters. So before you put it in, under your bung right here. Now, like we said, the crates are built for these Eskies to be a complete snug fit. So I don't have the straps done up tight as of yet. So that allows me to slide the Esky in. Grab your bung, there's a bung hole right on this side. This is why we've got it cut out. Screw that back in. Now what I'm gonna do is ratchet this down. That side, I'll come back to this side. Ratchet that. Sometimes I tweak it one more time. That's pretty tight. Boom. As you can see, it's a nice fit, snug fit. I've evenly done up my ratchets. The Jet Tech box is not going anywhere. This thing is so sturdy. 
with excess strap, you can either cut it and burn it or just roll it up and put it into a ball. A little trick I've got, I'll just do this. Roll it on itself. That's out of my way. Um, but yeah, guys, if you've got any questions, feel free to reach out. We're always here and happy to help. Happy fishing. Yoo.